And fast forward today, and that's why they've lost all their market valuation, right? It was just not listening to me. If they just listened to me, <laughs> it would be awesome. <laughs> but no. Um, as you can see, things have gone poorly for Intel. Listening to me would not have helped. They have their own problems that are much more serious. And so my sort of pet ideas about how we might solve some of computers' modern problems are kind of, I mean, Intel would be so lucky to be thinking about only those at this point. They're having problems even just fabbing chips, right? Uh, so, so it probably would have been a non-starter either way. Did it get any traction inside? Not really. Uh, and now, obviously, they're just, I mean, they're at a point where they, they can't be thinking about anything other than just do the chips work at all, right? Um, did it get traction outside of that? Surprisingly, yes. Uh, I hear a lot of, from people on 30 line, million line problem, especially for a video that was never made as a lecture. It's like some crappy thing I recorded from like the Handmade Hero streaming machine, right? It wasn't even presented at a conference. It wasn't done in front of my light board. It was not professionally recorded in any way. It's a super crappy version. I hear about it from people all the time. They email me. Again, my email is not public, <laughs> right? They go email the freaking business address to talk about it. Um, so it definitely struck a chord. A lot of people, I think, correctly sense that we have a complexity problem and that it's only getting worse and not better. There is a organization called FUTO, which is a pretty cool organization. It's started by a guy named Aaron Wolf, who is ex-Yahoo, uh, made a bunch of money during the dot-com boom and does not like the way tech went and is trying to fund projects and invest in projects that can help. And uh, I've been working with them on and off for the past two years, looking at options for this. There's a lot of people interested. It could happen in the future. It's a long haul problem. I wouldn't get anyone's hopes up anytime soon, but I, uh, there are people who are interested in this, and I think it's there's a it's not a zero percent chance that we might do something about it in the future. Yeah. Um, part of the problem is that it's not something I can spend full time on right now. So at some point in the future, if I do, I think that would help push the process forward further. I oh, think there is. A, well, sorry, yeah? if if you were if you were to spend let's say full time or even like eighty hours a week on this. What would you do? Research, research programs that would make it better. Like, how would you help? Uh, so, there's a lot of things you can do, but the biggest one that I think is incredibly difficult and requires a lot of expertise. So it would not just be me spending a lot of time making sure it was right, but I would also want to make sure that I was talking to a number of people with experience, and making sure they thought it was also right. Right. So it's it's both a it's both a collaboration with a several people that I would have in mind. I'm like, okay. these people should also vet this thing, but also me figuring out what does that ISA actually look like? Because the critical thing is designing that ISA correctly. And the 30 million problem is just saying we have a problem and we're going to need to fix this. If you had a full solution in hand, it's still hard. You've got to convince people to produce these chips. You got to start to get them to be popular. You got to uh, have an infrastructure buy-in and software baseline and libraries. There's going to be this whole thing that has to happen and that's going to be hard. But the hardest part of all is getting the thing right in the first place. And you only get one shot, yeah. right? So that's a full-time job. It's a full-time job. It takes a year or two. You've got to really do it right, prove it out, do tons of testing. And it could only be done by people who really know what they're doing. And more than one, it's not something that one person could do themselves. You need multiple perspectives, people who really know a lot and they have to work it out and grind it out correctly. I've seen uh, many times, like I mentioned Vulcan in passing, I've seen how like standards, why they suck. I've seen the process that produces the suck. You can't do that, right? You have to have a lot of grinding on tests where you test how easy it is to do each individual thing from both sides, from the hardware side, from the, from the software side, you have to iterate ruthlessly and like really push towards getting every last thing right. 
the reason every 3D graphics API you've ever used has sucked is because they didn't do that, right? And so you can't afford to just be like, I sat down and typed in all the things I wanted and there's the ice. That's like, that will suck. Doesn't matter who does it. If I do it, it will suck. If anyone else does it, it will suck. That will not work, right? And you have to be very arrogant to think that it will. You can't do that. It's it's a grind and you need more than one person looking at it from more than one angle and they all need to grind pretty hard on it to make it good. And so before you would ever really go down this route, you need to do some of that stuff. And so that's the kind of thing that um, has to happen before you can make real progress. There's things you can do in the interim, just trying to get simpler SOCs that you can buy more easily, making a Raspberry Pi that didn't suck, that just uses ARM or something. That's something. It helps. Gives you a little test bed. There's things you can do, but to really make the big progress, you need that solution in hand. And I'm not working on it right now, and nobody else really is either.